Hello, and welcome to the Pastor's Helper Podcast. This is Barry Davis coming to you from the great city of Lexington, Kentucky. Today, we will be discussing how to get your people back in the church who have been away due to COVID-19. I'd like to begin by telling you about my experience at my gym, and I promise, if you'll stick with me, there is a very solid connection to be made here with the church and COVID-19. I'd been a faithful member of a local gym for over two years. Uh, Most weeks, I went in five days a week at 6 a.m. for a one-hour workout. I'd get up at 5 o'clock, have some coffee, get dressed, and I'd head to the gym. I'd be there for an hour. And then I would come home and and start my day. And I was really proud of that because I had tried to do things like that many times for years and never stayed committed to it. But this time, as I said, I had done it for two years straight. And so it's quite an accomplishment as far as I was concerned. You know, when the gym was forced to close due to COVID, I didn't want to quit working out. But I knew I needed some guidance because I really don't know what I'm doing. And so I joined the service you've probably seen advertised before, and this isn't a commercial for them. It just happens to be what I got involved with, a group called Beach Body On Demand. And it turns out it has some fantastic online workouts that you can live stream. And I'd been doing various workout programs from Beach Body for a few months before the gym was able to open. And I'd continued to pay well over $100 per month for my gym membership, even though I couldn't use the facilities because I really liked the guys that owned it. And I knew a lot of people dropped out on them and they were on the verge of closing if people didn't continue to pay. So I kept paying. But when the gym finally opened back up, I was shocked to find out they actually raised my monthly fee substantially. So I had to decide what to do. Was I going to go back to the gym and back to that routine? Or was I going to stick with Beachbody On Demand? You know, I wanted to make a logical decision. Well, I ended up canceling my gym membership and sticking with Beachbody because I decided that not only was Beachbody one-twelfth of the cost, but I actually preferred the workouts that they had. And I loved the idea of being able to do them whenever I wanted instead of trying to fit them all in super early in the morning. I also felt that the online instructors, even though, you know, they didn't have personal contact with me, they don't know me by name, but they were able to do a good enough job showing me the proper techniques that I wasn't really afraid of risking injury. And I found out since then that my experience wasn't unique because, in fact, while I hate it from a business perspective and especially for small business owners, many gyms have closed their doors and many more are going to in the near future because a lot of people discovered the same thing that I did they could get just as good of a workout and just as good of instruction and sometimes better workouts and better instruction by doing it online and for a lot less of the cost. So what does all this have to do with the church? Well, the church finds itself in a very similar situation as the gym that we find in almost every sector of the world. The COVID-19 virus has interrupted church services, fellowship, gatherings, and almost every aspect of what we define as the church or doing ministry. In many cases, we found that churches have been forced to replace their meetings in a church facility with Facebook Live or YouTube Live services or or some type of service, uh, maybe a recorded service, something along those lines. Now, the good news of that is that many churches now know how to produce online services that never would have made that attempt In the past, some of them went out and bought some equipment or used something they already had. Maybe they just used the phone they had in their pocket, but they learned how to produce an online service, and some of them would have never done it. Some preachers would have never done it. Some boards would have never uh, allowed for it to happen for whatever reason, but you know how that works sometimes. The bad news is there are some people who either like the online services so much that they're not going to come back to the building, or they're not coming over the last few months has got them out of the habit of coming and they might be very hard to get back through the doors. In fact, they might end up like me and my gym. It's just more convenient to do it from home online. Now, let me tell you before I go any further that I am as pro-technology as you can get. 
I was on the internet when it consisted of dial-up modems and local bulletin boards. I mean, this was before AOL, CompuServe, and Prodigy, if you even know what those are. It was a long time ago. I had one of the first ministry websites dedicated to pastors. In fact, mine started in 1996. And I say all that so that you won't think I'm some old fuddy-duddy who doesn't think we should use technology and the internet for church. I am not that guy at all. But I don't believe for a minute online services and technology can ever replace meeting in person. It's a great add-on to what you're doing now. It really is, and I, I'm really glad that a lot of churches are doing it, but it is not a replacement. People need to know that being in church with other believers is essential to their spiritual growth and well-being. And I want to give you some ideas on how to get that across to your people as we are coming back from COVID. I'm not going to spend any time at all on technical details on how to prepare your building, proper cleaning techniques, mass social distancing, and the like. I mean, that info is already everywhere, and you're probably drowning in it already, and you don't need me to repeat the same thing you've already heard a thousand times. What we're going to focus on are the spiritual needs of your people and how to get them to recognize those needs and realize that those needs can only be met by the church. I want to break in here for just a moment to tell you about an absolutely free resource for ministers. You can download it at www.freesermonoutlines.com. It is a book called 52 Topical Sermons, Volume 1. And this is our gift to you just for listening. Again, go to www.freesermonoutlines.com to get yours. Well, now that we're back from that quick break, let's get down to business. I want to give you seven ways to get people back to your facility. And before someone writes me to tell me the church is not the building, I get that. I agree with it. You you don't need to convince me of that. But the point here isn't building worship, but the need to physically be in the same place together. I mean, whether that's in some fancy cathedral or a room you rented at a local hotel or at the park, it's all fine with me. That, That really isn't the issue here. So let me give you these seven ways to get people back to your facility, because I'm telling you, it's probably going to be harder than you think. You're going to have that uh, 40 to 50% that are going to come back. These are already your faithful people. These are the ones who give on a regular basis. There's ones that you can generally count on when you need somebody, but there's a big chunk there that were never really as committed, even maybe as you think that they were. And those are the ones that we're talking about. So here we go. Number one, have a big kickoff service, just like a new church plant. I mean, you can do this whether you've already started meeting or not. I know some of you have already been meeting. Some of you maybe didn't stop meeting. If so, a lot of this isn't going to be relevant to you. But most churches around the country did stop. And so whether you've started or not, you can do this. Pick a date on the calendar when most of the members are going to be in town. Put together a great message on the church and the vision. You need to let them know what are we here for. Basis, obviously, on what the Bible has to say about it. And get your best music team together. Give out invite cards to your members to invite to their friends. And do this up, just like you were starting all over again, because in some ways you are, and you're reintroducing yourself to a lot of people. It doesn't take long for the separation to take place. Here's number two. Limit your live services to one a month, okay? Limit your live services to one a month. I know this is probably a little controversial and you don't have to do it, but you know there's a lot of discussion going on about whether to continue online services once churches start meeting in person again. And as I've said, I'm all for using this technology, but if you haven't noticed, people aren't getting satisfied with getting an hour fix on Facebook each week. I mean, that really isn't going to cut it. And I hate to burst your bubble, But if you know how Facebook counts views on your services, they are ridiculously inflated. I just had a minister tell me that his church that averages 30 people 
was averaging over 1,000 views online. I can promise you that nowhere close to 1,000 people watched their services, and most who did were only viewing for a couple of minutes at best. I've been doing uh, online video for a very long time, and most people watch for a few seconds. Uh, some will watch the whole thing, but believe me, those numbers go drastically down. I would cut down online services to one per month until people start getting back to church again. That way no one is relying completely on it, and hopefully they'll come to services at the building. Several months down the road, you can reevaluate, sit down with your team, and decide whether to add more each week or not based on what you're seeing in your particular situation. In addition, as you've seen, it takes a lot of work to do an online service well, and you don't want to spread your tech people too thin. Here's number three. Personally, let them know that you need and want them back. Now, I already know some of you are going to balk at this as soon as you hear it. But you need to pick up the telephone and you need to call each member or at least each member family and let them know you miss them and you cannot wait to see them in person again. Let them know how valuable they are to you and the church. I mean, you can text if you want. But I'd try a phone call first. I would not send out a mass email. I mean, you can do that in addition to what I'm saying. But that personal touch, that personal call makes a lot of difference. Here's number four. Have each and every member contacted by each of your ministry leaders. I'm talking about uh, other staff members, but also I'm not sure how your church is set up and we minister at the pastor's helper to people from all different denominational persuasions. So I know this is different in different places, but I'm talking like elders, uh, deacons, people like that. Have each of your ministry leaders do the same thing I just described for you to do. Every staff member, every lay leader, get on the phone and do the same thing. Hey, I mean, set up a meeting with the other leaders, have dinner first, and then go to separate rooms in the church building or wherever you meet and start calling. That way, you know, everyone is doing it. So by the time your people have heard from you and now they've heard from each ministry leader, I think they're going to get the idea that you want them back. Here's the fifth thing. And this should go without saying, but I think I would say it anyway. Pray for each and every member and let them know that you're doing so. I mean, we do believe in the power of prayer, don't we? When you make your call to your members, let them know that you're praying for them personally and then really pray. You can also let this be known online through email, text, or any other means you have to communicate that you are praying. Here's number six. Give frequent reminders that your ministry to members and the members' ministry to others is severely limited when you don't meet. Let them know that there are certain ministries that just don't work outside of meeting together. I mean, how are you going to hold each other accountable? How can you share on a deep level without seeing someone's face and being able to read their emotions. How can you be encouraged without being in the presence of someone else as they're testifying about what Christ has done in their life? How can you experience a baptism together without being there in person? Obviously, some of these things can take place without meeting together, but they are going to be a shadow of what's experienced when you are physically together. Here's number seven. Pray, pray, and pray some more with your leadership team and invite the members of the church to pray with you together. Nothing is as important as you and the rest of the church leadership continually praying as a group for the church, the members of the church, and the needs of the church. Invite those outside of the leadership to pray with you. In fact, don't just announce that they are welcome. Make that invitation a part of your personal phone call. Hopefully these ideas are helpful. With God's help, the church cannot only come back together, but it can thrive. I'm absolutely convinced of that. And while everyone is preaching gloom and doom, let your church be one that stands out and views this current crisis as an opportunity to grow beyond anything you have ever dreamed about before. This is a day for innovation and solid commitment. I encourage you to adopt these ideas and make them even better. I'm convinced that you'll see positive results. Thanks for tuning in today, and please share this podcast with your ministry, ministry friends. And please remember to visit freesermonoutlines.com. That's freesermonoutlines.com to get your free book. May God bless you as you continue to minister for him. 
Hey, if you're looking for a way to make an impact with your Christian ministry through your church online, you really need to look at Anchor.fm. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast, and it's really important. Let me explain. First of all, it is free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcast, and many more. You can even make some money with your podcast with no minimum uh, listenership. It's everything that you need to make a podcast in one place, and it is a great outreach that you can do for your church and your ministry. Just go to anchor.f. Uh, M to get started, or you can download the free Anchor app. So just do one of those things, download the free Anchor app, or go to anchor.fm to get started, and you can be up and running today. Thanks for listening.